Starfield, a sci-fi epic from the makers of some of the most influential RPGs of all time. You heard me correctly, all time. You see, there is a reason why when a new fantasy game is revealed, people immediately tie it back to Skyrim. We've seen comparisons to Skyrim from the recently revealed Assassin's Creed Valhalla, The Witcher, Kingdom Come Deliverance, and most recently, and probably least surprisingly, Avowed. And yet, I truly do not feel as though people grasp just how big Starfield will be. A new sci-fi RPG that I firmly believe will once again capture the same renown as previous Bethesda Game Studios games. Camelworks made an excellent video discussing how developers and team members at Bethesda talk about Starfield when it does come up. Here's a small clip of that. The biggest, most epic science fiction thing you can possibly imagine. It's looking awesome. So okay. we're really confident, like, this is a game we're definitely doing. Because it's an incredibly uh, ambitious project. Um, but that game is crazy. Like, it, it's ambitious and insane and awesome in all the best possible Bethesda Game Studios ways. My personal background, for those who might not know, is in marketing and public relations, and I will be the first to tell anyone not to fall prey to the marketing jargon and the PR speak. But there is something even I can't deny, vastly different, about this. I've been thinking about it, heavily, over the past several days, and it occurred to me just how large of a jump each Bethesda release makes, and subsequently, how big of a leap Starfield is going to take. But before we get into that, I want to emphasize the impact that past Bethesda games have had, not just on players, but the entire industry. Within the winners of the Golden Joystick Awards, you will find three of the more modern Bethesda titles, Oblivion in 2006, Fallout 3 in 2009, and Skyrim in 2011, back to back to back awards. Game Informer ranks Skyrim as the top RPG of all time. Numerous awards have given prestige to these titles, as you can see on screen now, and a list of nominations that these titles have been honored is even more abundant. Say what you will about Bethesda Game Studios titles, whether it's on their outdated engine, yes, I am putting air quotes around that, or their poorly aged graphics, but they have a proven track record of setting industry standards when it comes to open world RPGs. Of course, there is always more that fans would like to see in future installments, but if you look at the jumps between Oblivion to Skyrim and Skyrim to Fallout 4, the changes are staggering. Between Oblivion and Skyrim, we were introduced to completely overhauled weather and lighting systems, a new method of dungeon creation in which every single location felt unique and handcrafted. We were able to bring along followers, romance, the spells in the game evolved from this to this. By the end of Skyrim's DLC, we were introduced to a house building mechanic that would later be even more realized in Fallout 4, giving us the ability to create entire settlements. And of course, what became a bit of a new staple for Elder Scrolls in particular, dragons gigantic creatures that would, without scripting, ambush us, attack cities, and otherwise wreak havoc in an effort to stop us, the Dragonborn. Dragons that, in future DLC, we would be able to ride. That is not to mention the overhauled combat, improved animations, new crafting systems, better graphics, kill moves, the improved level system, and introduction of perks, among many other changes that moved the series forward. I'm not going to claim that these mechanics were the best they could have been. Of course, many of them left something to be desired, and a few will point out that in some cases, Bethesda may have even taken a few steps backwards. I won't argue. But it would be impossible to look at these titles and make the claim that between Oblivion and Skyrim, we did not see massive changes brought to the series. Changes which, again, created what many claim to be the best RPG of all time. 
The same applies between Fallout 3 to Fallout 4, but I think I may have already proven my point. Before we bring this conversation back to Starfield, some of you might be wondering where Fallout 76 is. But it is, without a doubt, the Black Sheep, an outlier compared to the majority of Bethesda Game Studios' history. Although technically developed by BGS, it is not a mainline title. But let's talk briefly about 76. It is, as we know, running on a modified version of the creation engine used for Fallout 4. Starfield, on the other hand, is going to be running on something brand new. Not a new engine, no. It will still be an upgraded version of the creation engine. But something so upgraded and so overhauled that it likely won't be recognizable. Something that is worthy of a new name, the same way the Gamebryo evolved into the creation engine that we know today. So we've talked about the jumps between Bethesda titles, but let's now get into the technology behind these changes. Starfield is going to be even bigger. I won't begin to claim that I know exactly what that might be, and if somebody knows something I don't, please feel free to share. But there are several hints that can show us that this will be even larger than anything we've seen in the past. Not just because it's being updated, which we'll talk about, but more ambitious than anything before it. Let's start off with what we definitively know, a brand new animation system. Todd Howard has discussed this in the past, and the use of motion capture is something that elevates games into entire new levels of immersion. You can see the difference in, say, Skyrim versus Assassin's Creed. I know, two different engines, two different games. But motion capture is arguably the industry standard to have at this point. The major difference for Bethesda gamers, we have never seen it implemented into a Bethesda game before. BGS titles are all about immersion, believing that you are a part of the world telling your own story, and motion capture will escalate this into a brand new level. Photogrammetry. Visuals have been an elephant in the room when it comes to BGS. However, Starfield will make use of photogrammetry to make these environments more realistic. Once again, something we have never seen in a Bethesda game. But more interesting than all of this to me is simply the amount of time that is being allowed for development of this game. My running theory is that Bethesda knew in order to do the things that they wanted to for Starfield, they needed the power of next generation consoles. This alone should get people's heads thinking. Knowing that it would be until at least 2021, Bethesda understood they could not go this long without publishing anything. Hence, we see Fallout 76, a live service game that can constantly update, make some money, and keep players investing while we wait for the next mainline title, Starfield. This concept that only next gen will be capable of handling the ideas that Todd Howard has for Starfield is what gets me the most excited. And we know this to be the case when Bethesda mentions how they have no plans to bring Starfield to the current generation of consoles. Next generation systems will have technology leagues above what is currently available in the PlayStation 4 or in the Xbox One. The PlayStation 5 still holds the claim that it has more powerful parts than what is available in current PCs. And the wait for Starfield is to make sure that Todd Howard and the rest of the team can take full advantage of this power and to fully realize their vision for Starfield. So what does this all say? Starfield is going to be massive and no amount of wishlist series, yes, I'm calling myself out, or theories will grasp at exactly what this game can be. If the sheer advances between mainline Bethesda titles was not enough to convince you, then the technology that is now available should. And if that isn't enough, take it from Bethesda themselves. As I previously said, I am almost always one to look past the marketing jargon and the PR speak, but even I can't deny there's something different this time around. More than we may even be ready for.
Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please do leave a like. It helps other spacefarers find our small spaceport here. And leave your thoughts down below. I always read every single comment. Consider checking out our Twitter and Discord down in the description below. I hope to see you all next time.